The Razor Crest is the latest LEGO Star Wars Ultimate Collector Series model, an impressive looking assault ship that with little over 6000 pieces becomes the third biggest LEGO Star Wars set ever produced. And it's the first time the theme has done an UCS model that does not feature a vehicle from the three trilogies of Star Wars movies. Building big LEGO sets like these is usually a remarkable experience, and the same holds true with the Razor Crest, with an experience that starts with the box sticks to the all-black look we've seen recently from similar types of LEGO Star Wars sets, with a few extra details shown on the back and front and back views of the gunship seen on both sides of the box. For comparison's sake, the box is slightly taller than the UCS Millennium Falcon box, but thinner on the other hand. Inside, the numbered bags are split into two different boxes that feature beautiful concept work images of the Mandalorian and the Razor Crest. Each of the boxes has two instruction booklets with the cover having this orange toned print that matches the orange stripes of the ship. And the way the build is split actually allows for two people building this set at the same time. As usual, the first booklet has a lot of info and behind the scenes images on both the show, the LEGO model and some words from the LEGO designers involved. And before I show you the model in detail, let's look at the amazing selection of exclusive minifigures this set has. They can be displayed on this stand that comes with the standard looking UCS model sticker plaque. The first minifigure is Grogu, not exclusive to the set and comes with this pod. Should have been rounder, but given the scale I can think of a better way to do it. The first exclusive minifigure of the set is the Mithril never seen before in LEGO, perfect for minifigure collectors, that is, in my opinion, an interesting choice, as he only makes a few appearances on the show it's based upon. Next we have Quill, standard amount of detail when it comes to the torso print, but the head element, on the other hand, is amazing. It's dual color molded with a flesh tone and brown, and there's tiny prints all over the face and goggles, so I can assure you this isn't an easy element to produce. While not being exactly a minifigure, we have Quill's Blurg. I know it sounds like a joke, but that's this creature's actual species name. The build features a lot of studs not on top techniques, which was cool, and there's some degree of movement in its head and tail. There's also a gap at the top for Quill to ride it. The last minifigure we have is an updated Mandalorian minifigure. Comes with his cape and rifle and his helmet features new prints that previous versions of the minifigures never had. It's the first version of the minifigure with an actual face print and hairpiece and while the torso element and leg prints aren't new, the arm ones are. Feels a bit of a shame that it doesn't have new prints all around but I don't mind that all that much, it still looks impressive. Onto the Razor Crest itself, it's massive. You need to take that into account if you're considering getting it. It's almost as long as the Millennium Falcon, but not as wide if it helps for size reference. The main thing about the model is that the color scheme is mostly grey, with the orange stripes and some dark grey details here and there. Whereas the show version is actually silver. LEGO does have a few silver elements in its portfolio of elements, but from a cost perspective, if this was all silver it would end up being an insanely expensive LEGO set, so I completely understand the choice of color here. On the other hand, the grey becomes too much and too boring, so maybe a few more spots of dark grey could have worked well for the model, giving it the rugged look the ship is meant to have and not this polished. There's still some of that rugged look in some details spread out across the ship, and the iconic worn down orange stripes made with a combination of both actual bricks and some stickers do help break the boring nature of the all grey ship. What's not boring are the shapes of the model, if you look closely it's really hard to find a leveled surface on the entire ship, which was really impressive seeing coming together during the build. The whole front section and the transition to the wings are a good example of that LEGO craftsmanship, as well as the back of the ship, with again lots of different angled sections. Speaking of the back, there's the hydraulic rear hatch seamlessly built into it, with no obvious grabbing point for you to open it. You'll need to use your fingernails to access it, which can be hard for some, and it's worth mentioning that this isn't here just for show. It's an actual entryway to the interior of the ship, but more on that later on. The landing gear, however, is the thing I'm less impressed about in the model. Lots of different shapes all around make it not look that cohesive to me, if that makes sense. It was also a really challenging and stressing part of the build process, where it was hard to connect elements at times, the ship not being level and some elements coming off. 
Speaking of the build process, the massive engines take most of the pieces and time that took to build the second half of the ship. They look amazing, I'm not going to lie, and I love the use of chain link elements in light grey for some added texture. But I have to warn you, if you don't enjoy repetitive builds, you'll have a really hard time when you get to this. At the top there's the escape pod that can be detached from the main ship and has enough room for one minifigure. Moving to the front of the Razor Crest, there's the scythe etches, which are also seamlessly built into the scythe hole, with an extra foldable section that brings the whole thing to ground level and lets us peek a little bit more into the interior of the ship. You can't really miss the two massive laser cannons, but I really want to highlight the roundness of the front of the ship that was perfectly captured in LEGO form. The cockpit area is built out of three different elements instead of a single new cockpit molded element, which was a shame and hurts the design ever so slightly. The usual standard for UCS style spaceships is having a unique element being made for the cockpits, as we've seen in the past. So while I do understand that there would be costs involved in making it, we're talking about a $600 to $700 model, with not a whole lot of brand new elements and prints, so there's that. This whole section can be removed as is just resting on its place, which is fair since you probably won't be swooshing the ship around too much, and inside we can see all of the control panels of the pilot and seats for three. The two seats back here are in dark red, which I believe to be a new color to this element. There's a door that opens, a hole in the floor that leads to the bottom level of the ship, and a container with an ice cream element inside. Probably a reference to the container of eggs of a dying species, from which Grogu eats a few of in the show. You can pick this section up to access the lower level of the ship. And that's not the only thing you can remove. These three sections in the middle can also be lifted for an easier access to the interior of the ship. To the front there's what I believe to be the Mandalorian's bed that can be also removed to reveal some electrical cables underneath. Onto the middle there's a few things that can be detached for easier access like the carbon freezing setup as well as two carbon frozen bounties. We can also remove the Mandalorian's blaster cabinet, it's well stacked and it has a tile with Grogu's face and some writing in Orovash that translates to child on board, which is kind of funny. There's some crates and another show reference in the form of Boba Fett's armor on the wall. To the back there's a lot of empty space which is meant to fit the blurg. The interior of the ship is quite structure heavy, but I was still surprised by the fact that it actually managed to fit a full interior in a way, which sets like the UCS Millennium Falcon can't brag about, and placing everything back together in the end is very straightforward. At the time of recording I wasn't made aware of the price on this, but the rumors point to a 600 price point, which, if it turns out to be true, is actually a somewhat decent price for a LEGO model with little over 6000 pieces. It's a lot of money, don't get me wrong, but for an amazing display model, complete with full interior, with a surprisingly low amount of LEGO Technic structure, decent building experience, smart building techniques, exclusive minifigures with the license fees and all of that, it's decent. The Razor Crest is an amazing model all around, and with an expected release of early October, if you manage to grab one, you will not be disappointed. Thank you LEGO for sending this set for review, and I'll see you all in the next one.